Hey guys, Brian from Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with another PSA submission grade reveal video. You are not going to believe. Please stay tuned to the end. We're going to go through all of the numbers, do a deep dive into the data. I'm going to show you how much money I made, but more importantly, I'm going to show you how much money I lost as a result of PSA taking 15 months to grade these cards instead of just a couple months. The numbers are eye popping. It's astonishing. It uh, drives me nuts because if PSA can upcharge you for cards that go up in value while they have the cards, then why can't uh, I get a similar type treatment and get some kind of uh, compensation for how much these particular cards that I sent have gone down over the last 15 months due to the uh, change in the market and what people are looking to buy and sell. It is uh, an absolutely astonishing uh, deep dive into some detailed numbers. I'm not going to take much of your time. You've never seen somebody go through 215 cards on a PSA grade reveal as fast as you're about to see. Stay tuned. You're going to like this. Okay, guys, here we go. This is probably going to be the fastest you've ever seen somebody go through 200 plus cards for a PSA submission reveal. We're going to start with the dogs. Uh, 2019 Mosaic, Pink Camo, Kevin Porter Jr., PSA 8. Kevin Porter Jr. draft picks, Carolina Blue Prism, which is a really cool card, PSA 7, 14 out of 30, uh, USC uniform. I don't collect any college stuff. I don't advise you collecting any college stuff. I just picked those up for like literally pennies. All right, that's it for the terrible grades. You've got to stay tuned till the end of this. You're not going to believe. I'm going to have to actually pick up the camera to show you the end of this PSA submission because I can't show you uh, the way I'm showing you these cards. Uh, here's a cool card. 2019 Panini Absolute Memorabilia Sticker Auto. This card is numbered to 5, PSA 9, uh, Sticker Auto. Uh, mosaic 9, Mosaic 9, Mosaic Pink Camo 9, Mosaic Pink Camo 9. So 4, Mosaic Pink Camo 9, Kevin Porter's. Two Emergent Silver uh, insert rookie cards for Kevin Porter. Uh, some more draft picks. I won't take a lot of time on these. These uh, are called Blue Wave, which is really weird to me because they look silver. But uh, these are actually numbered out of uh, 299. Uh, red, white, and blue, which is actually numbered to 99. So in the draft picks back in 2019, the red, white, and blues were actually more valuable than the silvers. Here's a neon orange prism PSA 9. This card is uh, number two, 149. Uh, again, I don't really collect draft picks, cards, or college uniforms, but uh, you know these were so cheap, and Kevin Porter was so off the radar at the time. I picked them up for nothing. And uh, again, remember, this took 15 months to get back, so don't judge me. Uh, these are definitely cards I never would even consider grading right now. Uh, but uh, Kevin Porter was hot 15 months ago. And please, you are not going to believe how much money PSA's terrible return time cost me. You wait until you see the spreadsheet at the end. I'm going to put it in a, put it in easy to digest numbers for you. And then a Trey Young status uh, PSA nine. I really like this status product. Um, pretty tough to grade. They are paper cards. They're kind of foily looking on the front. They look like they'd be chromium, but they're not. Uh, these are uh, these are paper cards. Anyway, that's it for the uh, for the PSA uh, 7s, 8s, and 9s uh, for what I'm going to show you on the camera. So now let's go through some 10s. So we got some good grades here. I will be honest with you. I did really, really well on this submission. Mosaic, Mosaic, KPJ, Rookie 10, and then Camo, Camo, Pink Camo, Pink Camo, Pink Camo, Pink Camo, all PSA 10s, so five of those. Uh, happy with the results on the pink camo. I think that's uh, what, like five out of seven PSA tens. Uh, there is a heavy. Whoops, sorry. Got one more pink camo here. There you go, six out of eight. We've got a, a status scope Kevin Porter Jr. Uh, pretty good looking card here. I like the scopes, honestly, uh, especially this 20, uh, 2019 year. This is a good looking card for Kevin Porter. Again, forgive the wounds on my fingers. I have uh, a great deal of anxiety when I get PSA submission reveals back, so I bite my fingernails. Yes, I know it's disgusting, uh, but uh, deal with it. It's less creepy than wearing gloves when I do this. Uh, Mosaic Green, Kevin Porter, PSA 10, PSA 10, PSA 10. Nailed those. Feel really good about those. Um, Kevin Porter, back to the draft picks. We got a Kevin Porter draft picks, orange prism, PSA 10. Uh, this card is number two. Try to see what that says. 
Uh, sorry, it's upside down. Here we go. 125. So number to 125. I like that card. It's a pretty good looking card. It's sort of kind of almost a color match, you know, uh, with his USC uniform. Draft picks, neon orange, numbered to uh, 149, PSA 10. Uh, another one of those blue waves, what I would call silver, PSA 10. Uh, another red, white, and blue, PSA 10. Another draft picks, blue wave, PSA 10. And then the draft picks, these are really cool, I think. I mean, I know, again, we're talking about the bottom of the barrel here when you talk about Prism draft picks, but two Kevin Porters, uh, both, sorry, both number two, 199. These are the purple green Prism, uh, both PSA 10. Another blue wave. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a mojo. So this is the, uh, the mojo. Uh, this one is numbered to 49. So for whatever reason, unlike the regular prism, they decided to almost double the print run uh, of these mojo prisms in draft pick, number to 49, PSA 10. This one I really like, really good looking card. Again, I know these are draft picks, so they're not worth a dang thing. But uh, this is, um, I think it's red, blue, snakeskin prism, PSA 10. It's not numbered, but I know it is super short print. Then uh, finally, we're out of Kevin Porter. So we got a Brandon Ingram, uh, Blue Prism. These are numbered to 199. This is a PSA 10. Um, nice hot player right now. Let's see what his cards do during the summer. Might be a good chance to jump on Ingram. He's a franchise dude, in my opinion. I did a video on him. Uh, didn't buy any cards, even though I suggested other people might want to look at it at least. Uh, I got these two. These are 2019 Magic Johnson uh, NBA finalists, Prism inserts. These are both uh, the Silver Prism. So 10-10 on those, really happy with those results. Um, kind of hoping that Magic Johnson cards go up a little bit with, uh, I know it's not like it's the last dance, but this, uh, you got Showtime going and then you've got a really cool Magic uh, documentary out right now. I can't remember, I think it's like Apple TV or something like that. Uh, we got a crack and resub where I got crushed the first time around and lo and behold, PSA gives me a 10 the second time around. So Anthony Simons, rookie choice prism. Uh, this card is not numbered, but it looks like it should be. So it's got that scope background and it's from the uh, Prism Choice product. It is a sticker auto like all Prisms are nowadays, but uh, Anthony Simons is you know, obviously one of my super, super huge, deep investments that I've, uh, probably the biggest investment I've ever made in a prospect as far as quantity for sure. Um, we got a LaMelo ball. I just happened to rip uh, one box of Revolution. This is my favorite product, honestly, uh, to open. And I opened one box of 2020 Hobby Revolution. As you guys know, I don't open wax very often, but I opened a 2020, pulled this LaMelo. It is just a base, but I think it's like an $80, $90 card or something like that. So nothing crazy, but it's my only LaMelo ball card because uh, I didn't buy any wax and I didn't invest in anybody. From, uh, from 2020 that I can recall. And then on the other status, I submitted two of these. I got a nine on one, which you already saw, and then got a 10 on that one. And then lastly, uh, dug this out of a white box that I had up in my upstairs bedroom and was happy to get. These are really, really hard to grade. 2018 Prism, the gem rate on these cards is just absolutely silly. It's almost impossible. Uh, so really thrilled to get a 10 on this one for Bam Adebayo. This might be the only Bam Adebayo uh, slab card that I have. Uh, good player, good team uh, in the playoffs. Let's see what they do against the Embiidless Sixers since he's got his face broken. And now, uh, bear with me. I'm going to take you guys off of this, and I'm just going to scroll over here because this is the rest of my order. And, yes, those are all Kevin Porter, but I wanted to show you just the mass quantities. I crushed it on my gem percentage, right? And so these first two stacks, uh, as you can see, that's a pretty large quantity right there. For, uh, for all those stacks. So in this first one, it's the uh, red, white, and blue. I'm not gonna take you through every card. This whole stack is PSA 10s. This stack right here is PSA 9s. I submitted the greens. The greens I didn't do so well. The one thing I remember when I was buying these raw on eBay, it was much harder to find a centered green than it was to find a centered um, you know, base or red, white, and blue. And so this was back in the day when you could buy these you know, un-serial numbered prism cards and then grade them, get nines and tens, and flip them for tremendous profit. I mean, I was doing it at an insane rate with Simons and you know Tatum and Mitchell and Doncic and all that. Those days are over. So PSA has had these cards for uh, 15 months. And so I'm gonna show you the um, absolutely disastrous financial consequences of PSA uh, shutting down and holding my cards for 15 months and not allowing me to cash out on what was 
an absolutely brilliant investment at the time had they been on point and returned the cards in you know two, three, four months. Uh, anyway, we got, these are all PSA 10s, right? Uh, I think there's like 89 of them or something like that, PSA 10. I had an incredible gem rate. This little stack here is PSA 9s, and then I have one PSA 8. But as you can see, the PSA 10s, uh, I mean, I just destroyed it on the gem rate. I don't know if you guys can really get a grasp of exactly how many Kevin Porters that is. Would I do it differently today? You bet your ass I would. Uh, I'd buy just uh, you know one or two RPAs. Um, you know, had I done that, I'd still be in pretty good position. I wouldn't have all this inventory to move, but I'm a hoarder and uh, I can't really sell these right now because these cards have dipped so much. You're about to see in this spreadsheet that I'm gonna show you exactly how much uh, the hobby has changed. I mean, it is. this is the exact change in the hobby in a nutshell. This is what you would not want to do today. Um, so anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned, I'm about to run you through this spreadsheet, so hold tight. All right, hopefully you liked how quick I went through those cards. Again, no home runs, no super rock star cards, no four-figure cards, nothing to write home about. But uh, that was kind of the direction. Uh, this was sort of the tail end of the way that I used to buy raw grade and flip cards, right? I'd buy base prisms, non-serial numbered color, um, and, and just kind of low-end stuff like that. I'd get them graded for, you know, at the beginning it was $8 a card, $10, $12. This last one, I pushed it and did it at $25, but when I switch you over to this spreadsheet, you're going to see just how uh, lucrative this order could have been. What's truly ironic is that my best return, like gem percentage ever, like this is ever, of the 10,000, 15,000 cards I've sent to PSA, I have never hit a home run on the actual grades like this order, which I'm about to show you on this spreadsheet, I actually lost money. The value of these cards in these slabs at this eye-popping gem percentage, these cards are worth less than my PSA grading submission fee, not to mention what I paid for the raw cards in the first place. You're not going to believe this. Check out this spreadsheet. Here we go. I'm going to switch you over. I've got it all on here. As we discussed, I paid $25 per card. I submitted these cards way back on March 22nd, 2021. For those of you not familiar to the hobby or who've been living under a rock or hiding in a cave in Afghanistan, that was the absolute apex peak, especially of, you know, base prism, silver prism, non-colored prism. PSA 10s were the rage, especially on low-end cards. People were buying in mass quantities. Cards were peaking at an astronomical rate, especially the low-end type stuff that you just saw in that video. So I was, you know, doing that. That's exactly what I was doing. That was my move, right? I would invest in these low-end cards, especially for under-the-radar prospects like Kevin Porter Jr., who I thought would pop, Anthony Simons, guys like that, Garland, uh, low price point guys, not Zion, not Doncic. These, these, these are guys that are like pennies on the dollar compared to LaMelo and Edwards and Zion and Ja and Doncic and all that stuff, right? And so I was buying these super low, raw, uh, getting them graded, and then uh, selling them and making insane margins. There was a lot of people doing this in the hobby for buku money. Big time, big time flips on these. Uh, you can see I shipped it on the, at the peak of that 2021 bubble. Uh, the PSA received them. It took them almost a month and a half just to receive them, right? To get that email saying, we've got your stuff. Like that's right before the PSA shutdown. And that's why. It was taking them two, two months just to let people know they have their cards and they're in the system, right? And so that's two months gone right there. That's when cards had already started to dip. So by May, these cards had already started to drop uh, at a pretty precipitous rate. Uh, they received the cards. I received the cards back, as you can see right here on uh, April 30th, uh, 2022. So um, it's yesterday for those of you, uh, you know, just so you know, but obviously you're going to be watching this video maybe a week from now when I let it go on on YouTube. So 13 months to turn my cards around. If you want to see just how damaging that can be, pay attention here. Here's how I crushed it. In my opinion, 72% uh, gem rate, 72 plus percent gem rate, 156 PSA 10s out of a 215 card submission. In my book, that's pretty damn good. I only had six cards that didn't come back a nine or a 10. So 72.6 10s, 24.7% PSA 9s. In my book, that's a home run. If I could get that on every order, I would make an absolute killing. Uh, life would be easy, and I'd go buy a boat or a yacht or buy somebody else a boat or a yacht or something like that. That is an insane gem rate. That is not something to count on. 
Uh, again, it often uh, fluctuates with the grader that looks at your cards, uh, as you know, because I've had some PSA grade reveals where I got murdered on my gem percentage. But if we look down here, I paid a total of $5,494 to PSA to grade these cards. That was $25 a card plus insurance plus shipping. The fair market value of these 215 cards, yes, I comped every one of them using Card Ladder Pro, Sales History. I was uh, pretty uh, accurate. It was not hard to comp these cards. None of these are super rare cards. The total fair market value right now of all 215 cards is only $4,447. I cannot sell these cards to even cover my grading fee, not including whatever I paid for the raw cards in the first place. Now, keep in mind, I was paying 2 to $3 per Kevin Porter base prism card. I was paying 3 to $5 for every Kevin Porter green PSA prism, uh, a green, green prism, or red, white, and blue, blue prism. So I wasn't into the cards themselves for huge money, but it adds up. It's probably, you know, a thousand bucks or something like that. So here's what I want you to pay attention to. Look at what this Kevin Porter card is worth today. Look at that. This is a $17.11 card in PSA 10 condition. All right, we're not gonna talk about the greens and the red, white, and blues. Let's just focus on the base, right? It's a $17 card. I think the greens and the red, white, and blues are like $25, maybe $30 in PSA 10 slabs at a time where it costs $50 just to grade a card. As you can see, it's a high pop card, right? That's not a surprise, 4,810. And as you can also see, the pop in the last year has gone up from 1,920 to 4,810. So it's drastically more than doubled, and I have a feeling they're not done, right? Uh, that pop is gonna increase. We know what the pop is for Zion. Kevin Porter is in the same class. It's the same card. I'm assuming it's the same print run. So we know the pop is not done growing. Right now, this is a $17 card. But what I want to turn your attention to here is, and I want to get this big on your screen so you can see it. This card hit $200. This was a $200 card two days before I sent this shipment. So that's where the logic was. That's where the excitement was. I had a bazillion of these. I sent them in. I was hoping for a 50% gem rate. I would have crushed it. Even at, you know, 200, fine. You don't want to pick the peak? Fine, don't pick the peak. This card sold numerous times right around late March. 158, 171, 166, 133, even 105. So when they put my order in was around 5-3. There's when they put my order in, right? This is almost two months later after I sent the damn order. It's still a $95 card. I have 89 PSA 10s in my possession right now. They're worth $17. You can see what's happened to this card over the last two years. It is down 74.46%. So let's go back, right? And let's check out our spreadsheet. <clears throat> the KPJ Base Prism PSA 10 was selling for about 170 bucks on 315. It hit 200, but it's about 170 bucks when I submitted it to PSA. Today, they're $17 each. We just looked at it. That's a $163 difference between what they were worth when I sent it, which I thought was a brilliant idea, and I thought I was you know, maneuvering and winning the game, uh, and that yields a $14,507 difference just on the base prism Kevin Porter PSA 10s. That's not even including the greens and the red, white, and blues. I think that I probably had 21, maybe $22,000 worth of Kevin Porter Jr. What you just looked at in that video if you're looking, I'm talking just the greens, the red, white, and blues, and the base. That was probably $22,000, $23,000 worth of cards in March, maybe even early April, right? Maybe even into May as we looked at. That's probably $20,000, $25,000. The entire order of 215 cards, and you saw I had more in there than Kevin Porter Jr. I had some Simons, out of bio, some Trey Young, some Brandon Ingram, etc., etc. The entire order today is only worth $4,447. That is about as clear an indicia as what has happened in this hobby. Money is pouring out of the base prism and the non-serial numbered and the commodity cards and money is pouring into the high end. I'm not sure how much money is actually leaving the hobby. I think it's a double-edged sword and that's gonna explain how this card could go from 170 to 17 because I'll be honest with you, 
I was extremely excited the way Kevin Porter Jr. ended the season. I thought it was a fantastic uh, way to end the season. He ended it on fire with numerous triple doubles. He was starting to score the ball. He was starting to get comfortable. He was starting to click with Jalen Green. They were actually winning some games somehow with a horrific roster. Um, so I, I don't think Kevin Porter Jr.'s performance or lack thereof led to this you know, precipitous drop from 170 or from 200 to $17 each. Number one, I think that $17 for a Kevin Porter Jr. base prism PSA 10. I get it. It's a base card. That is dumb. That's ridiculous. Uh, that's just too low. So again, I'm not selling these cards, but uh, for it to drop from 170 to 17, it had a lot more to do uh, with you know what's happened in the market, what's happening with this hyper sensitivity to population reports than it does with how Kevin Porter Jr. performed. If you don't believe me, go look at Luka Doncic's cards. Luka did anything and everything. He's going to be first team All-NBA for the third year in a row. He's won his first round playoff series and his base prism cards tank like a mother, right? So we know it has more to do than the, uh, than the player. I nailed the player. I just didn't nail the card. And so this goes back to the age old adage where you can't just be right on the player. You got to be right on the product as well. And then of course you got to hit a home run on the grades, which I did a grand slam home run. Uh, but nevertheless, I get to lose money. Um, you know, so that's it guys. I just wanted you to see that. I think the reason that this card has dove from 200 to 17 is growth in pop rate. Uh, obviously is a big issue. Money is matriculating from low end to high end, but it's a it's a double-edged sword. It's a very swift current, and let me tell you why. Not only uh, are people not spending money on base prism, green prism, red, white, and blue prism, these commodity type prism cards and PSA 10 slabs, not only is money not going in there, people are also just taking their losses. I'm not doing it. I'm not selling these cards for these prices. There's not much more it can drop. What is it gonna go down to $4 a card? I don't care. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to hold out hope that Kevin Porter Jr. is an all-NBA guy one day and I can sell him for $50 and at least make a profit or break even, right? Uh, so that's a double-edged sword. That's why the current of, uh, of, of disaster is, is flowing so swiftly because, um, you know, not only are people not buying them, everybody's selling them. So this huge pop increase in all of these base prism cards are flooding into the market. Uh, demand vastly... Uh, is, is under supply. Supply is vastly um, exceeding demand, uh, which resulted in this huge suppression in the uh, fair market value of these uh, Kevin Porter Jr. cards. Uh, anyway, like I said, I have utmost confidence in Kevin Porter Jr. I feel much better about, and again, look, these are low-end flip cards. I've got huge Kevin Porter Jr. cards uh, in slabs in my PWCC vault. These cards, I was trying to buy low, grade, sell high, take that money and buy bigger Jordans bigger LeBrons, bigger Giannis, and maybe even a bigger Kevin Porter Jr., like an RPA or something like that, to add that to my other RPAs for KPJ that I've got in the vault. Um, so, I, I, you know, don't cry a river for me. Uh, you know, this is part of the risk of investing in, uh, in sports cards, just like uh, people got their ass handed to them on Tesla if they bought at the peak, just like people got crushed on Bitcoin or crypto and ETH or Ethereum. Ethereum or whatever that's called. Um, it happens in, in all markets. So it's also going to happen in all, the alternative uh, asset market that we call collecting basketball cards or sports cards in general. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you like my uh, detailed nerdy math videos here. I could have gone into much, much more detail on each particular card, where it was, what it would have been, what I lost. But honestly, it makes me sick to see how much money uh, was left on the table because PSA took 15 months to do something they could have done in two months had they uh, had the infrastructure to do so. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, watching me wallow in my misery and look at some cool cards. Uh, again, I'm still high on Kevin Porter. I'm higher on him now than the day I sent these cards. I'm more certain than ever Kevin Porter Jr. is going to be a good player. I might get flamed for that. He's my guy. My price point on these cards is about a dollar, two, three, add in the 25. So I'm in them for about 28 bucks. There is no way this Kevin Porter Jr. base prism card is not a $28 card a year from now. That's just my opinion. Maybe I'm crazy. I know the pop's going to go to 12000 or 15000 I get it. Uh, I just think if it costs $50 to grade a card, then the card in PSA 10 for a player who's relevant and, and is a promising prospect can't be $17. So uh, that's just my take on the matter. None of these cards are for sale because they're not worth enough. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby, even when you get murdered like this by PSA. And peace.